Alrighty, from the man cave again. Yeah, that's right, I said it. Anyway, I keep getting a lot of emails again about my whole little system here. Um, so I'll give you a little update. Uh, first is my Trace C35 charge controller. Uh, it's for all my solar panels outside. I would recommend it to anyone. It's awesome. They usually don't come with this front plate with the little meter and stuff on it. You have to get that separately, but I got mine used off of eBay for... I can't remember how much I bought it for. Um, one thing that's great about it is you can set it up for just about anything. Uh, DC load controller, diversion mode, or just charge control mode. I've got it in charge control mode. And I'm only putting out 4 amps right now, which isn't much. It's still kind of early. It's like 10.30. And we got a lot of trees. It's winter time, a few days after Christmas. And trees are in the neighbor's yard, so I can't really touch them. It's one of my critics. Anyway, um, what's great about these is you don't need... Um, a uh, shoot, no, I can't even think of the word, but uh, it sends out pulse charging to your batteries. So, you, oh, a desulfator, you don't need a desulfator with these because these pretty much do it for you. And another thing that's great is it's got automatic uh, equalization, so once a month it'll equalize all your batteries for you, and you don't have to do that manually. I uh, still got the same uh, 2500 watt inverter. It does pretty good. I uh, would still like to get a true sine wave inverter, but this works for now. Um, I've got a transfer switch or transfer box, whatever you want to call it. And the top side is grid power, and when you flip it down, it goes to battery power. And I'll try to explain how all that works here in a minute and I took off this so I can show you how I have it all wired up and I put everything in a box the batteries in a box it's not vented outside yet but I'm still not worried about it because our basement's drafty on the side here um, I've got my the little uh, sockets from uh, Watch out, buddy. Um, the cigarette lighter sockets, and you can plug just about anything in there. I still have the uh, same voltage monitor from Walmart, and uh, a little LED light that I made here. It's pretty damn bright. Anyway, uh, I've also got on the side some battery terminals, so if I want to hook up a battery charger or anything to those I can right now I've got my uh, wind gen wind generators hooked up to it I've only got two outside right now and it's another homemade charge controller which everybody and their mom wants to build one but I didn't make them up my dad did so I'm not gonna give out the uh, diagram and I mean you can buy them he sells them and uh, you can get them from uh, JL dash energy dot com which is our website um, and I'm still using uh, extension cords they're great they're cheap and if you have a three phase wind generator out there they're great because the extension cords have three wires in it for my solar panels which is this black wire here it's 8 or 10 gauge uh, landscaping wire because it's real thick and finely stranded copper wire. A lot of people for some reason use uh, like Romex wire, like the household solid copper wire. You should definitely not use that. Uh, DC, DC voltage has a very hard time traveling to solid copper wire. So a lot of people that have the solid wire hookup, they're not getting their full performance out of their wind generators or solar panels, so 
Everybody, please remember to use the stranded copper wire. And uh, let's see. Light bulbs are for the dummy load off of my charge controller, which I'll probably change to these water heating elements. Um, I hear they work out a lot better than light bulbs, so I'll be putting them in here pretty soon. And inside my battery box, uh, still got them all wired the same, but I put a little LED light strip in there that I made for uh, whenever I open it, there's always light in there. And there's a little switch over here on the side, actually there's two. But when I close the lid, the light turns off and turns on a fan to keep airflow going. And vice versa, whatever. Um, you always got to have some distilled water laying around to top off your batteries. <clears throat> um, last time the batteries were pretty messy with wires everywhere. You couldn't really see a whole lot. So, hopefully you can see it a little bit better now. They're all in series from here to there. That's how you get your 12 volts, each one, and so forth. And then along the outside edge, you hook up all your powers. And on the back side, you hook up all the negatives. And from my positive to my inverter, which is the red here, it goes from this corner back around to the inverter and the negative side goes from that corner which is tucked behind but it goes to there also and what else we got here <coughs> oh I guess I could show you this this is how I have it hooked up into my house um, the center terminals is what you hook up is how you connect it through that panel to that panel which I have through this black wire here there's a white red and black wire on the center these two over here are both both grounds so how I have it hooked up is I got my 120 volt grid power coming into this terminal and when I flip it up <coughs> it'll connect the two grounds together and the reason I did it this way is because uh, well, I don't know. It's the only thing I came up with at the time. But anyway, so you flip it up. It connects the center terminals to all these. So these two, which go through the red and white, down this wire, and in my breaker panel, usually how it works stock, or whenever you don't mess with it like I did, the top side is its own 120, and the bottom side is your own, is an own 120. That's how you get your 220 for your stove or whatever so what I did got the red and white wire over there I don't know if you'll be able to see it but I got the white one hooked up to this bus bar right here and well the red one's kinda hidden back there but it's hooked up to that top one right there so when it's in the top position everything is hooked up as it should be from the utility company or whoever put it in here and whenever I flip it down my little black wire here and this white wire which is from my inverter so when I flip it down it's going to connect this center terminal through the black wire and the white wire which goes to this side the black wire is hooked up to the main and it's kind of, oh yeah you can see it right there and the white wire is hooked up to this ground bar so the way I did it is each bus negative bus bar here is completely separated or isolated, whatever you want to call it, from the grid power. So I don't get any feedback or I don't have any issues connecting my house with everything. And it doesn't mess with the grid power or anything. So anyway, hopefully that shows a little bit. I'm sure I'll get more questions or whatever on that. And I need to go outside to show you all the solar panels I've got out there. I think I've got seven, which gives me around uh, 
420 watts of power but when all said and done I usually only see about 25 to 26 amps through here because you got to figure in the, the voltage loss you're going to lose from your solar panels all the way down here for the distance so I do need to go outside and make a path in the snow uh, we just had uh, about a foot and a half of snow and there's three foot snow drifts outside and I'll go do that and continue on